there's sort of like three main sections in the book. And I, I'd love to, I'd love to share those with people because I think many people have seen the very attractive cover, but they don't actually know what's on the inside. And so for that reason, I'd, I'd love to kind of share um, kind of what the overall structure of the book is. Uh, and so just first of all, you may notice that there's kind of this, this green section here. Um, and that's a section of um, very short uh, exercises, we call them. Um, that, you know, where, for example, here, like 10 prints, you're sort of, you're achieving this kind of um, sort of graphic. And, you know, there may or may not be, there may be more than one way of doing it, but there's, there's sort of a few, a few sort of right answers, um, even independent of what programming language you're doing them in. You're doing them in. The second um, kind of bigger thing that we have is uh, something like, um, let me find a good example, uh, sort of classic assignment prompts like the clock. And so here's, you know, there's clock and the way this would work as a chapter is that first we sort of have a sort of large inspirational picture. Um, and then we describe kind of a brief over here where we say like design a clock that displays a novel or unconventional representation of time. We talk about learning objectives and this uses sort of terminology that a lot of people may have to uh, use when creating curricula um, that they have to submit to their departments or their universities for approval. Um, so having sort of ready-made learning objectives articulated here, it could be very helpful for a lot of educators. Um, we talk about some variations, uh, some of the ways that, that the assignment can be varied creatively depending on the level of sophistication that the students have. Um, and it's important to point out that this assignment is something that could be done by introductory students or very advanced you know, professionals. It's, it's all, there's no specific level to this. And then we have a section called uh, making it meaningful where we, we sort of talk about like, well, when one makes a clock, for example, or when, when one makes one of these assignments, like how does one go about making it sort of poignant or relevant or, uh, or interesting? And then we have typically a bunch of examples, um, a few pages of examples by, by, uh, that we think are sort of inspirational. Um, and then finally, um, uh, we have a long list of additional projects and readings that are sort of like links to other things out there in the world that um, people can, can easily Google uh, and then sort of find more information about. Because we, we couldn't in include pictures of, of, you know, literally thousands of projects. Finally, the third thing that uh, the, the book has is a set of interviews um, with a bunch of our peers. Um, and so there's, I think, what, Tiga, like six or eight interviews, do you remember? Yeah, I think it's eight or nine, actually. Yeah, um, and they're on different topics, like, you know, encouraging a point of view, like, you know, how do you encourage meaning making, criticality, perspective, and heart in otherwise techno-formal education? And, you know, these are interviews with a bunch of people um, who are sort of shown shown here, uh, and they, they sort of are, are almost like co-authors of the book with us because they are sort of a brain trust of our peers who, um, have a lot to say in this field are really experienced artist, educator, designers um, who have themselves pioneered um, these assignments and, and curricula for, for new media arts and design education. So those, those are the sort of three sections. There's sort of like small exercises, large assignments, and then sort of interviews to kind of, you know, if, you've, if you're just finding yourself teaching this for the first time, or if you've been teaching for a while and you've sort of lost your way, like, like these kinds of help ground you in like, and how your peers can think about this.